So the exhibition explores uh, the five senses um, in relation to my own fired ceramic works. Um, so making work that uh, a gallery visitor can interact with um, using the five senses. The initial idea might, might start its life off um, as a little note or a little pencil sketch, line drawing in a, in a sketchbook. Just pushing the idea through, writing notes, um, trying different compositions on paper. I'm going to be using this as a, um, as a nice chocolatey colour. This is a, a terracotta clay when it's fired. But you can't use the clay, unfortunately, you can't use the clay straight from the bag if you make working on the wheel. And you have to do this pretty much every lump of clay that you throw on the potter's wheel. You've got to go through this process of, of wedging. And you just get a feeling um, from experience of doing this that you know there's no air in that clay and it's all nicely in a, in a nice um, equal, equal state. So I think it's three, three kilograms, so it's probably slightly under. Oh yes, two. So we need to add a little bit. So I'm starting off with kind of like a bun, bun shape. And then centering is all done at, at speed. So I get the wheel going round pretty much flat out. People are generally, um, if they haven't done this before, very, very tentative. They're always uh, amazed at how much physical force you have to use to get the clay, the clay centered. So there's no movement there. You just know that that clay is right in the middle. I'm just going to make a well, one finger going right down to the bottom, and then define that inside profile. Right hand on the outside, I'm squeezing in, and you can feel that, or I can feel that clay beginning to lift and coming up very, very slowly as well. This is a bit of, bit of collaring. It's a little bit dangerous because you're speeding the wheel up and you give the clay any speed and it naturally wants to go go that way so it's a thing of collaring at the bottom and then again just lifting the clay up the cylinder shape is the mother mother shape really for so many different shapes and forms that you throw on the potter's wheel and one of the very last things you do to the cylinder is put the final shape in For this one, I think we're going to need a nice smooth surface. So I'm going to use this metal kidney here, and I'm going to use that just to scrape the slip off the uh, the size side of the vessel. And you can see you end up with a much smoother smoother surface. So it is yeah, extremely wet and extremely wobble, but wobbly, but great. You can do all kinds of things when it is like this and that's when I have moved my making on when I get the chance just to purely play with the clay and the four different kinds of forms that I make on the wheel and then collapsing them and squashing them and poking fingers through them just to see what happens really. I use, use throwing in a very experimental way so I'm not always sure what I'm going to be making like I said I might have a very simple idea in a sketchbook but when I sit down there, I often let the, the technique or the experience of playing with the stuff on the wheel and just see, see what happens really. What can I do with this one? I've got a fork. I think I'm going to have a play around with, the, with a kitchen fork and see what sort of effects that I can get. Play is really important at every single stage and you know, just focusing on the, the unexpected things that you wouldn't happen in. You know, even if you might not use it for one piece, there might be something quite amazing and quite creative that happens on the wheel. And then you're able to put that in the bank and use it another time. In my early work, I saw an awful lot of parallels with, uh, with baking and making and, and cake making and decorating. And it is, it's, I love work when it's freshly made. It's, it just, it's just beautiful and it's just, it's been finished, but it's still kind of, it's not wobbly anymore, it's gone to that leather hard state and it's freshly painted and it just looks almost edible. The goblet's actually produced in three sections, so you've got one section for the stem, a section for that bit there, and then a, a kind of flat plate that I've thrown on the top there. So they're thrown separately and then attached later. 
So this is just white, white clay, same stuff as this, but a, a paler, paler version with water added. And then I've driven it through, through a sieve as well. It's lovely stuff. It's like cream, like sort of the uh, consistency of double cream. And then it's just a very satisfying uh, process. For the exhibition at, at Bilston, I, I kind of limited my palette to very natural uh, colours and, uh, and tints. You know, it's a very simple palette. Terracotta and white and cream. Very natural, a natural palette that I've chosen to work with. So this one's ready, ready to go in the kiln. It's been drying for, for a few weeks now. This is the kiln. We've got two, two kilns, both top loading. And uh, they're like great big dustbins. These pots will be in the kiln. Roughly between 12 and 14 hours, they'll be, they'll be cooked or uh, fired for. This is when the, uh, the clay is actually at its most delicate and most brittle. It changes from being clay to ceramic at about 560 degrees. It takes a day or two to reach temperature and then a whole day to cool down as well. So it's kind of like a two to three day process before you actually get to look at your work. So it's always a little bit of a tense time when the pots are in the kiln because you're never quite sure are they going to survive. How are you going to open the kiln lid and, and there are lots of shards and pieces. And it's fingers crossed. Some, some senses have, have proved uh, a little more challenging than others to create fired ceramic work. I mean, taste has probably been the, the trickiest. Um, how do you get people to taste ceramics or, or fired ceramics? So we've had to do a, a little bit of sideways thinking with, with that one. So I'm playing with the, uh, the idea of uh, making, uh, making biscuits here, just kind of like flat, flat disks of clay and just experimenting with the decoration. Each one is uh, essentially a doodle. I quite like the idea of doodling in clay and, uh, and, and a lot of the things I do um, are just seeing what the material will do really and, and see, well not only the material but what I can do with the different tools. Originally I really wanted to make some huge pieces on the, on the potter's wheel which I did but there was only a certain kind of scale that I could get to. I researched other ways of making large pieces of work and um, something that I had done before, but not for a long while, is actually build a piece of work out of wet bricks. When we're working in a studio uh, situation, you're always confined by the size of the kiln. Here at the Brickworks, well, sky's the limit really for scale. Here we've got three, three pieces of work, three vessels that I've been working on. This is uh, very much the wet bricks. They've dried out a little bit to leather hard stage, but the wet bricks arranged in the, in the order, in the rough order, um, ready to be carved. All the clay is exactly the same clay as, as, as we've been using at the studio, um, but they put different colour sand on the exterior to, uh, to give it the colour. Once I've carved them, the piece will look a bit like this. And you can see how this piece is beginning to dry in another week or so, this will be riddled with big fissures and cracks and it will be ready then to be disassembled and then put onto here. There's probably about 100, 100 bricks there and it's been taken apart. They've all been carefully labelled and it's now ready to go into the kiln. So these are the, uh, the giant kilns that the bricks are going to be, going to be fired in. Absolutely massive compared with uh, you know, my top loading kilns that we saw at the pottery. But it's incredible, the same process, you know, exactly as when I'm working in the studio, I'm using the same materials, same process, but this is it on a huge industrial scale and, and I find it very inspiring working here. It's kind of what I do, it's, it's ceramics but on a, on a massive scale. Yeah.